so let's talk about inserting images into your document. Go to File and Place if you'd like to insert an image and then browse to your picture and hit Open. Once you do that you'll see your image attached to your cursor. You can drop it in around the right place. And you can see that InDesign has imported my picture in its actual size so it needs to be resized but it's not as simple as simply grabbing a corner. Firstly, you need to make sure you're on your selection tool, which is that black one, which you should already be on. And you can use that tool to grab one of the corners of this blue bounding box. And you can see when I start to do that, that I'm not actually changing the size of the picture at all. I'm just cropping some of it out. So you can think of this blue bounding box as the window that your picture looks through. So we resize that window first and you should have grid lines already set up for this. So we resize our bounding box and that looks about right and then we go to our direct selection tool which is that white cursor looking thing in the toolbox. Now when I click on my picture you can see it's still actually sitting there underneath where I've cropped it and this is the one that we can grab a corner to resize with. So I'm going to hold my shift key on the keyboard down because I want to maintain my aspect ratio and I can resize that and I can also move it around to where I like. Okay that'll do that's images. So let's talk about graphical elements now. Graphical elements are things like circles or squares or rectangles um, that might be coloured or not coloured on your page. So we can see one on my example here. It's got the page number in it. Um, most of those you'll find in this button on the toolbar. So right now you can see a rectangle and if I click and hold my cursor you can see I've also got an ellipse tool and a polygon tool. So with my rectangle tool, I can obviously draw rectangles. If you hold down your shift key, you'll draw squares. The ellipse tool, pretty simple, ellipse or circle. And the polygon tool will draw polygons, very even polygons. And it'll also do something else. While you're still drawing your polygon, that is you haven't let go of um, your mouse, you can use your up and down arrows on the keyboard to add more points to that polygon or take them away. And you can also use your left and right arrows to change where every second point sits. So that one can also make stars and things. And that's graphical elements. It's pretty easy. Um, any graphical element can be a text box. You simply need to grab the type tool and click in it. Okay, so I've just deleted those graphical elements off of my document and I have drawn a small square in the top left hand corner, um, just like my example. My example also has a very thin line that runs from the edge of the picture to that number 10 in the square. So I'm going to add that on as well. There is a line tool in your toolbar. And you can use that to draw your line. And then up in the tool options up top, you can increase or decrease the weight of that line, like so. I'll leave that one at one though. You can also change the style underneath. Now let's talk about adding color to your page. The last element that we need to put on our page is color. And one of the best ways to do that is through using the swatches uh, pane on the right hand side of your screen. When you click on the swatches pane, you'll notice that there aren't many colors to choose from. Um, and this is because if you'd like to use any specific color, you need to create a new swatch. And to do that, you need to find this tiny menu in the top right hand corner. Click New Color Swatch, and this box will come up. Here, if you have codes for um, a CMYK color mode that you want to enter, you can do it here. So CMYK is for print.
based design. Um, so yep, you can enter your values straight in there and click add. Or you might have um, RGB color mode color codes, um, and that is for screen based design. It's very boring, isn't it? Um, if you're not sure what color you'd like to use, or you'd like to browse through them because you don't have color modes to enter, I would recommend looking through these Pantone colors down here. And if you're not printing on a gloss paper, I would choose Pantone Process Uncoated. If you are, choose the Process Coated to start browsing through. And there's lots and lots of options in here that you can browse through. Once you've finished adding your swatches, click Done. And you'll see they're all in your swatches pane now. As well as letting us apply colour to items, the swatches pane will tell us what colour is already applied to item. So for instance, if I click on this square that I drew earlier, um, I can tell that there is no, no fill colour applied to that square. And if I click on this little thing, I can tell that there is a black stroke applied. So these things um, are the fill chip and the stroke chip. Here's the fill chip and it's highlighting none for fill. So if I'd like to change the fill colour and make sure the fill chip is in front and I click on the new colour and we can see how that's changed over there. If I'd like to change the stroke, make sure the stroke is clicked and I click on the new colour. And If I have a look you can see how that supplied the colour there. You can also apply colour to text, although it's a little bit different. So if I highlight this O, you can see that I have a fill chip. And right now that's got a black applied to it, but I don't have a stroke applied to text by default, although you can add one if you like. So you can see I've added a red stroke to that O. You can also apply colour to your text boxes so you can apply a stroke to that or a fill if you want and you could also apply a stroke to any images that you have and that's the basics on how to put type images graphical elements and color on a document in InDesign I'm going to go ahead and finish off this page using just the techniques I've shown you um, to make it look like this example
Okay, so I fixed this one up as much as I can be bothered to. Um, and it's a bit hard to see exactly how it looks with all of these guidelines and margins on the page. So if you'd like to look at a preview version without all of those, look right at the bottom of your toolbar and the very last button, click and hold and you can see normal preview bleed and slug. And if you hit preview, it'll take away all those lines for you. And you can see um, your page a lot more clearly. You can see I've actually bled out that picture um, to meet the bleed line because my example image is bled out. And if I turn those grid lines back on, you can see all I've done is make the picture meet that red line, which has given it that effect when we look at the preview version. You can still work in preview version if you'd like, everything works the same, it just doesn't have all of those lines on there for you. So finally, you'll need to know how to export your document. Um, if you want to save it and keep on working, you'll need to just save that as um, an InDesign file. But if you'd like to export that one as a PDF, you can go to Adobe PDF Presets. This lets you define a lot of stuff. Um, if you just click export, you're just going to get a PDF. Um, I'd advise you to go for press quality if you don't know exactly what you're doing. Choose where you'd like to save that to. I'll we'll just put this on the desktop. And once you hit save, um, InDesign will give you all of these options. If you're a student at the SJC, you might be asked to show all marks and bleeds and you just need to go to this third option here, marks and bleeds, and click all printers marks and use document bleed set and then hit export. And here is the file that InDesign has made on my desktop and you can see I've got these little marks in each corner and that just shows where the edge of the paper would be um, and where that bleed margin is it also has colours up the top for printer calibration. If you don't need um, margins and bleed lines to be shown, you can go to File, PDF Presets, Press Quality, just saying that too, and you can just hit Export from here. Make sure that's not ticked. There's lots of other options in here. If you're required to export that in a specific way, you should find everything you need in this box. So if I export that without bleed margins, oh, you can see it there. Oh. I wonder if that's exported properly. Yeah, it should have because I brought that out to the bleed line. So that's the very basics of InDesign and hopefully um, you have enough skills now to go off on your own and learn some more. There's a lot more that the program can do but this is definitely enough to get you started. If you'd like to know more about InDesign and you're a student at the School of Journalism and Communication, please attend a maths our session.